Visibility within the atmosphere is of great importance to pilots and aviation in general. Visibility is a crucial factor in all VFR flights and has significant influence on the legality of landing or takeoff. Meteorological optical range, or METVIS, is described as the greatest horizontal distance at which a dark object can be recognized by an observer with normal eyesight. Alternatively, if it is dark, visibility is a measure of how many lights of a specified candle power can be seen. Put simply, visibility is a measure of the atmospheric clarity or obscurity. It is relatively simple to estimate visibility. By day, reference is made to suitable objects at known distances from the observing point, perhaps a hill or a building, such as a church or a factory chimney. At night, it is more difficult. The observer uses lights, a glow from an urban area, or perhaps an outline of a hill to distinguish the visibility. There are also several instruments that can be used to measure visibility more accurately. These are the gold visibility meter, the visiometer, and the transmissometer. There are two main obscurations in the atmosphere whose presence will restrict light. The first is the presence of water droplets. These can either be suspended in the form of cloud, mist, or fog will be falling as precipitation, for example as snow, rain or drizzle. The second main obscuration in the atmosphere is the presence of solid particulates, for example dust, smoke or sand. We can also have a combination of solid matter and water droplets, sometimes referred to as smog. You may recall from the lesson on stability that a stable atmosphere prevents the vertical movement of air. A stable atmosphere is mostly the product of a temperature inversion. Solid particulates generated by industrial and agricultural activities will be trapped close to the Earth's surface, causing them to build up and reduce the visibility. Layers of particulate-laden air are frequently seen when flying, and a stark boundary is sometimes visible. Such a situation is common around cities under the influence of high pressure. If the visibility is less than a thousand meters and the relative humidity is near a hundred percent, fog exists. With a met visibility of a thousand meters or more and an upper limit usually of five thousand meters, although this upper limit does vary occasionally, we have mist. The relative humidity must be 95% or more. Haze or smoke is caused by solid particulates and so the humidity will be less than 95% and is frequently in the order of 50 to 60%. Haze or smoke is reported with any visibility below 5000 meters when the humidity is not high enough to report mist or fog. Let's now consider the visibility reducers in a little more detail, namely precipitation and suspended water droplets. Precipitation reduces the visibility whenever it occurs, but some types of precipitation cause a greater reduction than others. The worst of these is snow, which can reduce the visibility very swiftly, sometimes to values of 50 to 200 meters in a heavy shower, as shown here. Drifting or blowing snow has an even greater effect on the visibility. For private pilot flying, where visual reference to the ground and obstacles is vital, flying in any snow shower should be avoided. The reduction of visibility in rain will also depend on its intensity. Visibility as low as a thousand meters or less can occur in heavy rain. Drizzle, on the other hand, can reduce visibility to a greater extent than rain due to the very large number of droplets present in drizzle. Visibilities of 500 meters or less are not uncommon. Probably the most important reduction of visibility is that caused by fog. 
There are five types of fog that have been identified. These are radiation fog, hill fog, advection fog, frontal fog, and arctic or steam fog. Firstly, let us examine radiation fog. Radiation fog is caused by the loss of heat from the Earth's surface at night. The air at low levels is cooled by conduction, and if enough cooling takes place, the air in contact with the surface will reach its dew point temperature and become saturated form fog. Certain conditions must prevail for the land to cool by the required amount. Firstly, we need a clear sky. Remember that clouds act in a way that can trap heat near the Earth's surface. These two requirements are usually met when high pressure prevails. Secondly, there must be sufficient moisture in the air so that cooling will result in saturation. So therefore, the relative humidity needs to be high. Thirdly, we need light winds of around 2 to 8 knots. If there is no wind, the condensation nuclei necessary for condensation to occur cannot be suspended. If the wind is too strong, mixing occurs with warmer air from higher up and prevents sufficient cooling. Radiation from the sun reaching the earth will generally lead to the thinning and eventual dispersal of radiation fog through evaporation. As the sun warms the ground and the air in contact with it, convection and stirring of the lower layers of air will take place. An area of radiation fog will be cleared mainly from below, but also from the fog top and around the edges. Increasing wind will cause mixing and warming of the lower layers. This effect will lift the fog into low stratus cloud. Hill fog forms when moist stable air is forced to rise over high ground. The moist air will then condense to create low cloud which covers or shrouds the high ground. It can be localised or very extensive indeed and is a major hazard to low flying aircraft. Visibility in this type of fog will usually be less than 200 metres. Advection fog is formed when warm, moist air moves across a cold surface. The temperature of the surface must be such that the air moving over it is cooled to below its dew point. For this to happen, the wind speed must be around 15 knots and the air must have a high relative humidity. The cold surface can be either land or sea. Advection fog is common around coastlines and is sometimes called sea fog. Dispersal of advection fog usually occurs as a result of drier air moving into the area or by an increase in wind speed, which has the effect of lifting the fog into low stratus cloud. Frontal fog forms just ahead of some warm and occluded frontal systems. The evaporation of the water into this cooler air causes it to reach saturation and form fog. The belt of frontal fog can extend as much as 200 miles ahead of the front itself. The fog will clear once the front has passed. Runway visual range or RVR reports are designed to give more accurate visibility readings along the runway. These are only reported when either the horizontal met visibility or the RVR is less than 1500 metres. Reports are taken every 15 or 30 minutes depending on the amount of air traffic. The instruments used to measure RVR are called transmissometers and there are usually three placed alongside the runway. One at both ends and the third in the middle of the runway. The readings given by these instruments are actually called Instrumented Runway Visual Range, or IRVR. RVR readings can be given by air traffic control to pilots, or they can be found in the pre-flight briefing documents such as METARs and SPECIES. Shown here is a typical RVR reading. The prefix R is the identifier for RVR information. 
The next is the runway designator, in this example, runway 24 left. The value 1100 is the touchdown zone RVR value in meters. There are some other details we must know. RVR values less than 50 meters are reported as M0050. RVRs greater than 1500 meters are reported as P1500. There may be a 10 minute trend reported. U means the visibility has increased over the last 10 minutes. D means it has decreased. And N means no change. A letter V should be included if there are great variations in the measured RVR. Here, the RVR has varied between 450 metres to 600 metres during the 10 minutes preceding the observation. Oblique or slant visibility is the surface distance ahead you can see when operating at a specific height. If you are flying within a haze layer, you will experience a restricted visibility. This is shown by the part of the visibility sphere in front of the aircraft. At the height shown, it is not possible to see the ground. Oblique visibility is zero. However, if the aircraft descends, then the pilot would be able to see the ground, and he would be able to see more of the ground ahead of him. So, within a haze layer, descend to improve your oblique visibility. Conversely, if operating above the top of the haze layer, the oblique visibility is increased by gaining altitude. If there is a shallow fog layer covering an aerodrome, the pilot flying an aircraft overhead might think that the visibility is quite reasonable. However, lower down on final approach, conditions will appear much worse as the pilot has now got to view through a greater amount of fog. This is dangerous and may lead to confusion and disorientation. That completes the lesson on visibility and on the cause of the various types of fog. 60% of all weather-related air accidents and fatalities occur in conditions of impaired visibility. Be very aware of the danger of poor visibility. As a private pilot, you have to maintain visual reference with the ground. Without it, you may quickly become disorientated.